Okay, so with this reusable function that will encapsulate the logic we've been using over and over manually writing these expressions that concatenate names together, right? The idea is we're going to do it as a function. So we could do this in any database. I could use Ironwood that has nice examples of names, sports motors, and so on. But on Thursday, we're going to introduce another new uh, scenario with a new data database, a nice simple one for some examples. So we might as well get a head start and we use it today. So I mentioned at the beginning of class to some people who are here that under content categories, I threw up a new script under our lab docs. A couple extra scripts actually, but this doctor patient one is what I'm going to start with right now. This script, if you want to download it, what it does is it just creates tables. It's not like the complete scripts we had earlier that fully look after creating the database and dropping it and giving you a factory fresh copy, right? This is just creating the table. So if you ever have to remove them, you have to do that manually and it doesn't make the database itself, right? So to use that, what I'd want to do is come in here and actually uh, create the, the database from scratch. Sorry, I should have cleaned up my uh, Management Studio here a little bit before I started. Okay, so I could make the database and uh, okay, so just a quick review then of creating a database as well, right? So if I just come up here, right click on databases, I can select new database. And please always use your username here at the college, dcevel underscore. So I'm going to call it medical office. for my doctor table tables, doctor patient tables. It's a little of a, it's not that I want to play doctor, play God. Okay. So if I refresh, come down here, here's my empty database for medical office. So I can open a new query window on it and then I can grab my script that I put up in Blackboard. I actually have it downloaded already. It's right here in my downloads. So I will drag and drop it in. And there we go. So again, this is not a complete script to create the database and everything like our earlier ones, but it will make my two tables that I'm going to use in this example. It's nice, simple database to start with again, but just at least it makes a change from and has a few other interesting things different from our department employee. Now to see the effect, let me just refresh again here. I always like a database diagram to start with. So I can just make a new one, okay? Yes, please add the support for diagramming. I'll add my two tables, and there we are. So here I have doctor, patient. Okay, you can see right away that I have a one-to-many relationship. Can you set the one-to-many relationship as a function? Uh, no, we haven't made the function yet. I've just created the tables, okay? So the one to many here, the ID of the doctor, the primary key comes over here as doctor ID as a foreign key, right? So the general idea is that would be the primary care physician. Now, if you were to build upon this system as a starting point, obviously you'd probably end up having a many to many, right? Because a patient might go into the office and see any one of the doctors there. Okay, and you'd, so you'd probably have like something like an office visit as an intersection table between doctors and patients. But this would still give you a chance to store their primary care physician or family doctors, we used to call it, right? Okay, even if they see other doctors from time to time. Okay, but it's a decent example because we have, you know, name information in multiple tables. So a good chance to get some nice reusable logic encapsulated into a function that can just concatenate our names together for us. Okay, so that's the scenario we're working with. So something useful always is uh, the... Uh, detail about the columns available right here in the Object Explorer. So I'll just expand all that so we can see that nicely on the screen while we work. Okay, my doctor, I have just a first, middle, last name there for the doctor, and these various fields here for the patient, and away we go. All right, so let's get to our function then. So back in Blackboard, I think I did have, oh, I guess I closed it, or is it in here? No. Go back to weekly folder. All right, so UDF name, that'll be the name of my function. Create function. All 
Now, we could put all the parameters across the screen, but we're allowed to do this kind of thing just like we did before we stored procedures. Okay, the white space doesn't hurt anything. So I need, as for the instructions, right, parameters for first, middle, and last names. And we're going to return a concatenated version of the name. We'll, we won't worry about the next sentence until we've got the first part done. So I need three parameters, right? Now I could follow the general guidelines I've mentioned already of using the field names, and that would be a perfectly valid approach. But I just wanted to share with you, as programmers, we all get lazy. Sometimes it's okay. So this kind of thing is acceptable if uh, I just use even F, M, and L for first, middle, and last. What I would probably want to do with that is include a comment to at least document. It's kind of like, you know, when you use an abbreviation the first time you explain what it means, and after that you can use the abbreviation. So it's a good practice if you're going to do short variable names like this to include a comment to explain what, how the variable is used and what it stands for, right? So if I did at F for the first name, looking at the data types here, they're both varchar 30 and both tables that I see in my system. So that's probably a good choice for a data type, varchar and it's one day I'll learn to type. Okay. Now, fortunately I'm allowed on the same line to put some comments in like uh, for the first name, right? Okay. And I can continue on, right? So if I have at M for the middle initial, now you see actually there's no middle name in the uh, patient table. It's kind of an oversight. I don't know why I, I really should have one. Maybe we'll have to add it later. Anyway, but we do have a middle initial column here in the doctor table. Notice it's a char one. It allows null, right? So I'll have to deal with the null issue in a minute. But a char, just to share with you from experience, years of experience, Char makes a terrible parameter as a data type. Varchar is much better, and later on in your code, it's very easy to work with a from a varchar to a char. But just as a parameter, because it has to be flushed out to the exact number of characters, it can be really tricky sometimes getting data from the client application into a parameter that requires a char. So I never ever create a char parameter. I'll use a varchar. even if it is only one, right? Okay, and I should put a comment about the middle name and so on as well, but I'm in a hurry, so I wanna give you guys a break. So for the last name, looking there, I see 50 characters. Okay, and that's the last parameter, right? So I don't need a comment anymore, a closing round bracket there. So help me out, I'm running a function here. What's the next keyword I have to have in place? It was in the PowerPoint a minute ago. Yes? Returns. Returns with an S. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Returns, and then I have to specify the data type. So if I'm going to concatenate this name together, worst case scenario, right, in case all these characters are filled, 50 plus 30, that's 80 plus 1. Plus, of course, I'm going to need some spaces in a period maybe, and so I'll round it up to probably 85. And that'll be the data type of what I return. Probably bigger than I'll ever need, but it's okay. Yeah? Space doesn't count as a character? It does. Yeah? So I need, uh, there might be two spaces, okay, around the middle initial plus a period that's at three extra, plus I don't know, so it might be 84, but I like to round up to the nearest five. Okay, then I could say as and begin and end. Now, one thing I have to do inside a function is I actually at some point have to say return, right? Oh. Okay. Now, I won't be happy till I have something after the keyword return, but we'll get to there in a minute. So if I think about this, okay, if I have these three parameters for the first, middle, and last name, really what I need to do, I could, it's such a simple, or it's just a, single expression to evaluate, I could just say return and put the expression. But I always like to create a local variable. The reason for that, it makes your code easier to read. And if you have to do more than one step, you know, if it's anything more complicated than that, 
then it's good to have a local variable you can use while you are doing all your manipulations, right? So I like to make a variable to work with. Then we'll assign the expression to the variable and then return it and go for coffee. Okay. So pretty, pretty simple uh, function at this stage. So to make a variable, while well, we know we use declare, and the name of the variable is not very important. Well, I mean, it should be meaningful and clear and self-documenting, so I might just call it the name, right? Now the data type, see, the goal is eventually, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say return my variable name, right? In the meantime, I'll work out what should be stored in there, but I'll just pass that to the return command. So, no brainer, the data type of my variable should almost always be exactly the same as whatever I've set up here for the returns data type of the whole function, right? If I'm using the variable to define what gets returned by the function, it should be the same data type as up here. Simple, simple, right? Okay. So that declares the variable to work with. So it's really just a matter of filling this, assigning okay, the expression. So to assign, I either use set or select at the name. And we've done this kind of thing a few times now. So for now, I'm just going to assume a full name format, right? First name, middle initial, last name, right? So with my nice short variable names, I can just go at F. And then after that, I might hard code a space. And then after the space, there's the at m business, but of course it might be null. So I know I'll probably want to use my is null. So I already have a space after the first name, so I don't need one before the middle initial. So it'll be at m. Oh. But it, assuming for now that the middle initial is there, then I would want to add a little bit after it, right? I'd want to add a period. And because I'm going to continue on, a period space probably, right? So that much from here to here would be the expression that I'm going to evaluate. If it returns null, then I'll substitute whatever expression I put next. So basically, I already have a space up here that follows the first name. So I really don't want to add anything. If the middle initial is null, the way I'm writing it this time, I don't really want to add anything. So that is represented by a empty string. Just two quotes side by side with nothing in between. There we go. So I have the first name, a space, nothing if there's no middle initial, if it's null. But if there is a middle initial there, it'll put that, a period, and a space. Right? So all I really need to do next is add the last name. You could have arranged this differently, you know, put this space inside here or whatever, but as long as you get the right answer in the end, that's good enough. So that basically is it, right? So we have my... How could there be? I haven't run it yet. There, it went away. <laughs> I think it's because I did the same thing earlier and IntelliSense remembered. Oh, well, that's okay. Any question about that function? Yeah, is not, um, is not at um, loss dot. Yeah. But if n is null, what, doesn't that become null plus dot? That's right. So if any part of an expression is null, the whole thing becomes null. So is null, fortunately, allows us to have not just a single variable here, but to build whatever expression we want. But the result of evaluating that expression is determined is it null or not. So it means that we can add some extra stuff in there, assuming it, it's going to work OK, that we don't have a null. Then it gives us a chance to actually build up a more meaningful expression right there. Right? OK. But if this is null, then the whole thing becomes null, and then we substitute what's in here, which is nothing. <laughs> well, it's not nothing. It's an empty string. Believe me, it's not the same as a null. OK. All right, so that should work. Let me just execute that. Yay! I didn't have any syntax error, so it was successful in creating it. 
Where does it live? Well, let's just have a look at that. Remember I showed you the other day that stored procedures have a spot over here in the database under programmability. Well, not surprisingly, there's one for functions as well. Okay, And we have the table-valued and scalar-valued functions. So there's our user-defined function right there. And you might say, well, I should save this script, and you probably should. I'm not going to bother. But I do want to emphasize that as long as the object is there in the database, I can do this, right? I can right-click on it, script function as create to a new query window. Look at that. All my comments and everything else were saved as part of the object so I can have it regenerate the script that was used to create it anytime I want. Now, mind you, you know, if somebody mean like a professor comes along and deletes your database, then all your work will be gone. I've been known to accidentally delete the wrong database before. So you should always keep your actual original script that you used to write these, okay? Protect yourself from me, <laughs> and then you'll be much better off. All right, but I just want to show you that that is there, and it does actually live as an object in the database. How can we use it? Well, let's just play around with it a little bit, right? Let's suppose I start with a simple select star from 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 ah, oh, I don't know why I'm so bad today. From doctor, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been worse. Okay, look at that. There we are. We have our huge abundant. Uh, Medical clinic here with full of doctors. Well, three. Okay. Oh, we have at least one with a middle, no middle initial. All right. If anybody knows Charles Xavier's middle initial, then don't tell me because I want to leave an, a null one for an example. Okay. So let's see how we could use our function. Well, maybe I'll just change this a little bit first of all. Let's uh, throw in the ID. And then I want to, of course, use my function, right? So DBO. Since I have to use that anyway, dot is kind of nice because it gives me a list of things I can choose from, including my user-defined function, UDF name. It's right there in the IntelliSense. And as soon as I hit the bracket, look at that. Okay, get all this nice IntelliSense showing me, okay, what variables and their data types to pass in, what it returns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So the first name, well, that's going to come from the actual table here. First name. Okay, the middle init, and last name. Close the bracket, okay? So the function, of course, will run, and it will just substitute as doctor, right? It'll just substitute its value that it returns in place here, right? Just like an is null or any other function, it just gives you a value, gets returned, plugged into the expression and calling it. Execute, and there we go. All right, we'll take a break in just a second, but in the meantime, we see the names are being put together nicely with okay, the period space after the middle initial, if there is one, just a single space between first and last name if there isn't. Success. All right, so we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, there is a little bit more here, because we said also include a parameter, whether we want full name, or formal name format. That's the last name, comma, first name business. So we'll do that when you come back.